Okay, this is the uh, audio mixer in room 129 of HSB. We we'll talk about the philosophy of um, how the uh, rack mixer works with audio. Uh, first of all, you see um, you have four of these panels, and each one represents a room: room A, B, C, D, and when you have an event and you want audio, you're going to either have what we're going to say a wireless microphone or we're designating input to for the wireless microphone. So this piece of rack equipment here is a mixer in itself. And then each individual mixer four mixers there are also mixed together for a master um, volume control from this device here. So when you're having issues or when you're setting up a room for audio, uh, of course you have to designate are we using a wired microphone or a wireless microphone? If you're using a wired microphone, you should have your microphone plugged into the wall plate in input one. And if the microphone is working and the cables are uh, in good working condition um, and you're still not hearing anything, that's when you come back and look at the room mixer that you're um, plugged into. So if you don't have any audio, of course that's off. Um, the standard position should be on about four and um, I would never go to ten. At most I'd probably go to six, uh, six and a half maybe. Uh, the same thing with the wireless microphone. This is the volume for it. Uh, rarely we have uh, anything in three. Um, mic four also has a, a, a lower impedance for inputs like from uh, another mixer or, or uh, some other device um, other than a microphone. Um, we again rarely use the tape input. Uh, the wall plate designation here uh, goes along with the microphone, I'm sorry, the headphone out of a computer. The headphone out in the computer goes into the wall plate uh, on the wall and if uh, the computer's audio is up as loud as it'll go, uh, you might could come back and adjust the volume up on this. So the next adjustment in the audio is if these things are set at the proper level and you still don't hear anything or want to boost them all up at the same ratio, you have a master room volume on each one of these panels and you can bump that up. See, we keep them down about four um, so that you don't get it too loud and thus the, the speakers get overpowered and start crackling or you can hear a hum. So the best thing is to keep them around four or five um, and uh, I'll have a good setting output uh, from each of these boxes. And then also you come here with the master volume. You can either turn all four mixes volumes up or down here and you do that by not th this button pushes in and out uh, you do this by not turning not pushing the button in but turning the level here of course halfway is probably good if not lower it'll be better also you're looking at the room separating, electronic room speaker separating uh, process to separate 
and combine rooms for audio. Push and hold the button in, and while you turn it, look, you're selecting different configurations of speaker output. So that, of course, is allowing every room to hear uh, at the same time. You, you um, divide a room, only D, only two divisions, only A, and now you're, you're getting into other situations. So I'm still holding it in and there's all the four rooms separate. So when you get to the configuration that you want, you let go. So at that point, I wouldn't necessarily, if they're all separated like this, I would not necessarily change the master volume because if you do, it's going to change the volume in every one of those rooms. So if, let's say, room A has a soft speaker and um, you want to boost them up, you would only come to A and move their wired microphone volume up or their wireless microphone volume up or leave those set and change the room master volume up. Again, I would never go much farther than a couple of notches. And as a courtesy, I would probably come back after the event is over and put the volumes back like they were. So if you look on the top here, these are wireless receivers. Microphone is known as a transmitter, and so they transmit to these boxes. And if you notice, they each have a designation for a frequency and a group, it's called. So um, the wireless handheld microphone would come in here. Uh, let's say you have an event where someone wants uh, two handhelds or a handheld and a lapel mic. So you would have um, two wireless receivers. And let's say also the event is going to be in A and B. So um, you can designate wireless mic in two, wireless mic in two. And that's just room B and that's room A. So it's kind of complicated. You see these cables in the back. One is red, one is somewhat shiny black. So all you do is trace it, you wiggle it, trace it, find it, and if, again, you wanted it in A, or room B, uh, this is the, the wireless, it's plugged into two, and the wired microphone would be, lovely, would be plugged into one. Oh, I'm sorry, room A, input to room B input to. So that's just a little complicated, but that's how it works. Otherwise, you don't fiddle with anything else in the rack. And um, uh, one other final note is if you are having an input into the, of a computer into the wall plate into the room, um, and you see that the cables are good and the audio volume on the computer is up, um, but you're still not getting any sound. Um, this is a uh, network uh, controlled IP address controlled rack, let's say, and there's a, uh, a routing uh, power switch down here, and sometimes again, um, if it's been left on a long time or it's been a power blink or something, it, use, it loses its uh, IP kind of address um, to the wall plate. So we come here and reboot the system by pressing that red button off, waiting about 15, 20 seconds, and press it back on. 
and in our experiences that has uh, fixed the problem. So I think that's all uh, that you basically need to know about how to operate the rack in 129.